Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and you know how much I love cheap computers, and that is why I love the Raspberry Pi, and I also love Chrome OS because it typically runs on cheap computers, but up until now, we really didn't have a workable version of Chrome OS running on Raspberry Pi hardware, but a new project which started up back in December uh, is really making some excellent progress, and we're gonna boot up and run Chrome OS on this little Raspberry Pi 3 that I just bought the other day uh, for about $35. Now, in the past, I should fully disclose that uh, Element 14, who sells Raspberry Pis here in the United States for the foundation that makes them, uh, did send us a couple over the last couple years. Uh, they did not send me this one, though. This one I purchased with my own funds. I've never had any financial relationship with their company, uh, nor is anyone going to review this video before it is posted, so all the opinions you hear will be my own. And I know these disclaimers are long, but I think it's important for every YouTuber to disclose their relationships on every video, and that's what I'm going to continue to do here on the channel. So let's take a look at the hardware first on the new Raspberry Pi 3. It is very similar to, uh, in looks at least, to the Raspberry Pi 2. And you can even go back to uh, the, uh, the Raspberry Pi B here to see that there is a lot of similarity as you're working your way across the line. But this new one now uh, is faster, so it's a lot faster than the original one. Uh, it's a little bit faster, maybe about 50% or so faster than uh, last year's Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, so this one is powered by a 1.2 gigahertz 60 64-bit quad-core ARM V8 CPU. It's got a gigabyte of RAM just like last year's version has. However, this one now has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in, wireless N and Bluetooth 4.1. It even supports low energy Bluetooth also. So if you have some wireless Bluetooth devices for a project, uh, this will work with it. So it's got a little bit more connectivity. It does consume slightly more power. So if you are looking for uh, running these things off a of battery, uh, this will consume a little bit more, especially under load because it is now powering some of those wireless radios in addition to all the other stuff it was powering before. Uh, usually like an iPad adapter, any kind of two amp tablet adapter should be fine for the three. Uh, older iterations of the Raspberry Pi can consume less power. So if you have an op operation that really needs very low power, you might want to consider some of the other models. They're still selling all of them uh, as, we, as I'm uh, recording this. So there are a lot of options here for the Raspberry Pi if you want to get one. Uh, so you plug the power in over here. You have HDMI out for plugging into your display. Uh, we're not going to cover uh, multimedia too much in this video, but we have in the past, and these things, even the old ones, uh, do an exceptional job of playing back uh, even Blu-ray files over your network too. Really capable little machines here. You have analog audio and video out over here. Uh, 100 megabit ethernet here, so fast ethernet but not gigabit. And you got four USB ports for plugging in peripherals. You do want to be careful that you don't uh, plug in something that draws too much power. So if you have a hard drive or something that needs a lot of juice, I would suggest getting a powered USB hub to accompany this thing. But uh, things like USB sticks, mice and keyboards, and uh, low power devices I found work just fine. Uh, over here are the GPIO pins. And this is kind of the heart and soul of these Raspberry Pis. So these are really designed uh, for getting kids and adults even uh, excited about integrating electronics and computers. And you can address all of these pins uh, programmatically with Python and other programming languages. So if you have uh, devices that you either buy or build yourself, you can really uh, have your Raspberry Pi computer interact with the world around it through these pins. They're ex it's an exceptional uh, platform, and there is so much great stuff out there. Uh, there's a couple of websites like Adafruit Industries that do a lot of neat projects that if you're trying to get a kid excited about computers, these are really the good path to do that. And they're actually made by a nonprofit foundation that wanted to get people excited about simple computers again, and these are. However, they can be very complex, too, because they are running, in, in one of their iterations, a full version of Linux, or in our case, uh, Chromium OS. So a lot of capability here. You do have some headers here for connecting a camera and a display. They have some camera modules and display modules available also. And the only other big change on this one over the two is that uh, they're now um, friction mounting the card. So the prior versions had a spring-mounted card, which would sometimes get popped out. Uh, this one just slides in and just uh, holds itself in with friction to uh, keep everything going. It does consume a little bit more power, as I said, so it does get a little bit hotter than prior versions did, but not too much so, uh, but it is a little bit warmer, so you definitely want to uh, keep it cool if you can. Uh, they do have some heat sinks and stuff available. If you overclock these things, I would very highly suggest uh, putting a heat sink on the processor, but for what we're doing, we should be fine uh, keeping it open air a little bit uh, as we boot it up. So let's take a look now and see Chrome OS running on our Raspberry Pi. All right, so here we are on a Chromium OS desktop. Chromium OS is the open source iteration of Chrome OS, and you can see it looks uh, very familiar if you've ever used a Chromebox before or a Chromebook. 
and we can do multiple windows, we can move them around. Pretty snappy video performance on here already. It really feels very polished for such an early project. Now the project is called uh, Chromium OS for All SBC, and SBC stands for Single Board Computer, and we'll use their website here as a test bed for uh, how fast everything can uh, work as we browse the web on it. So the page is almost loaded here, there we go. Uh, I have found that JavaScript and things kind of bog it down a little bit. Uh, this is a very early build, so I'm sure they will optimize as time goes on. Uh, right now, this is only working on the Raspberry Pi 2 and 3, because these are the two higher performance versions of the Raspberry Pi, uh, but they are looking to port this for other single board computers, including the $5 Raspberry Pi Zero, and a few others that are out there as well. So uh, pretty exciting stuff to have a uh, real, you know, really uh, dedicated project to getting Chrome on these uh, single board computers because Chrome OS is such a well-optimized operating system, so specialized and really perfect for these things. And I'm glad there's a project really looking to uh, spend some time on it. So let's take a look at some other web browsing though so you can get a feel for uh, how this is working here. We'll go visit the New York Times and we'll see how fast it loads up. Now, New York Times has a lot of script on it, so it does come in uh, nicely at the get-go, but it will bog down a little bit as some of these uh, scripting elements come in. Uh, by default on here, there is no flash running on it, so this is all HTML5 stuff, but you can see it does take a little bit of time for uh, script-heavy sites to get uh, rendered in. But once they are rendered in, as we've seen on many low-end PCs, uh, it tends to work okay. So we'll wait for it to uh, give us a ability to click on a link here, and then we can go uh, browse around a little bit. So it's still not the fastest thing in the world yet, but again, this is a, a very, very beta version of uh, Chromium OS here. We will be looking at uh, the Raspbian OS, which is the, one of the native operating systems that uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation has made for their devices here. But I'll tell you what, I think this isn't bad for $35. It seems to work uh, pretty well as a uh, Chrome OS device. And one thing people might want to do is use uh, Google Docs and other uh, types of web-based applications here. So I've got my master spreadsheet that I use of all of my uh, benchmark results here. And we'll let this load in. This is a pretty big spreadsheet. It gets bigger every week. Uh, so you can see how long it takes to load this in. Now there's a couple of tabs on the bottom that we have to wait for, uh, to come up here. So we'll wait for those to come. And there we go. So we can browse around it a little bit. I have found uh, something like this, a pretty involved spreadsheet to really bog this little computer down. Uh, this isn't the fastest processor on here. And it also only has a gigabyte of RAM. So this is definitely not going to be a speed demon when it comes to uh, doing spreadsheets and stuff. But uh, once it does get everything loaded in, you can uh, start to use it and uh, do some stuff on here, but it will not be the fastest thing in the world when you have very involved spreadsheets. But again, once you wait for it to load and things uh, get caught up, it tends to uh, start to get a little bit faster. And again, I think over time as they uh, start doing more with this operating system to get it optimized for these little computers, I think we'll see uh, better performance here. But so far, so good. I'm pretty impressed with uh, all of that so far. Now we're watching this on YouTube right now. So let's see how YouTube works on this device. It's not quite there on the optimization just yet. Uh, these Raspberry Pis are actually very good video players, but uh, with a web browser loaded and all the memory requirements there, it's not always perfect. So you can see we're getting a little bit of lag here. Uh, what I did before is I turned it down to uh, 480p and I was able to get uh, a passable frame rate on that. So I'm going to turn this down here. I'm not sure what it's at at the moment. It might have just been the page rendering in that was uh, slowing it down a little bit. So you can see it's still going to lag on you a little bit uh, as you're going here. But okay, we are at 480p. So I'm going to start it up again and see if it uh, catches up now that the page is rendered in. So now it's working a little bit better. I found that 480p is about the best you're going to get before you get major lag on here. Uh, we'll take a look at the stats for nerds and we'll look at uh, whether or not we're dropping frames as we're going here. So it's doing okay. It's going to drop a frame or two here or there at 480p, but uh, you will get video with sound uh, through your HDMI. And it, once it settles down and gets the page rendered, it should do fine. Uh, but because you only have a gigabyte of RAM built into these Raspberry Pis, you definitely don't want to tax it too much. So uh, you probably will have just this open and that's it if you really want to get uh, decent performance, but it does seem to do pretty well. And it even does some WebGL stuff pretty well too, surprisingly. It's certainly a little glitchy here as you can see, but this is the uh, Hello Racer, which is a little WebGL test that I run from time to time. And uh, it's not perfect. It certainly runs better on our uh, dedicated Chrome uh, books and boxes, but uh, it is running. It's not crashing the browser. And that's one of the things that's been really amazing is just how stable this thing has been. I haven't crashed it yet. You know, it's been working great throughout the entire experience here as I've been playing with it tonight. So a uh, very nice build for where they're at. Now I did run the Octane benchmark test, which I used to measure uh, one computer against the other, especially on the low end PCs to see how they're capable, how capable they are in, in rendering JavaScript and HTML and everything. Uh, we got the lowest score we ever tested on this at 2,300 
too. Uh, that's not to be, you know, that's not a surprise because this is a new build of Chromium OS on the Raspberry Pi. It's a brand new project, so it's going to take some time uh, to get everything optimized. But it's usable. It's not fast, but it's usable. And I think that's what's great about this. And I really just wanted to draw some attention to this project because I think it's very valuable uh, to get these uh, really simple and lean operating systems that are still very powerful uh, onto equipment this inexpensive. Because at $35, uh, these can be great for schools that don't have the budgets to buy uh, expensive computers. And they can really uh, spend just a little bit of money and get a computer in the hands of every kid that wants one. And I think that's a really awesome thing. So I hope we can uh, draw some more attention to this project. If you're a developer, maybe you can get involved with it. And if you're not a developer and just love playing with stuff, uh, just help spread the word because I think it's important that uh, this kind of development continues, especially on these inexpensive PCs. And they're off to a great start. It is really stable. It's working very nicely. And I can't wait to see what happens with it next. I haven't even talked to them yet. I need to reach out to them uh, and see if I can get a representative on the channel to interview them about what their plans are because I'm really excited to see uh, Chrome OS making its way onto these little single board PCs. This is Lon Zybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.